around 10 a.m. I'm in zone 6B in western North Carolina, USA, and it's about 57 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's my garden. That's the one in the ground down there. Um, I am currently moving some of my containers down to that garden. Um, I'm moving my thyme and my parsley. So you'll see a little pot down there. So I'm just giving some of my uh, containers a new home for the fall and hopefully next spring. So let me go ahead and walk you through the garden here and we'll see what's growing. So over here to the left is the green stock growing system. Let me show you what's growing here. So in the green stock system, I have my Swiss chard, which has been growing all year, even from when I planted it by seed from in March. And I have planted spinach, it's doing great. I also planted some more spinach. I planted those about three weeks apart. And I expect those, those will do fine through the cold weather. We'll be getting here soon. I am doing an experiment. I'm also growing some cabbage and broccoli in a couple of these pockets. I don't know that they will mature in time to really get a lot of growth going before the really cold temperatures hit in January and February, but we'll see how they do. And um, I also have planted green onion, which is coming up, and dill, and chervil, and cilantro. So a lot of things growing. A lot of my lettuce is doing great as well. This is the butter crunch lettuce. And so now let me go ahead and show you the rest of the container garden. Okay, so now I'll walk you through the rest of the container garden. Um, there's not a lot that's changed since the last time I walked you through here, um, but I do want to show you just a couple of things. And I'll leave a link to my last herb container garden um, walkthrough. I think that was in September. So I'll leave a link to that if you missed it, okay? So in this first container, I have some green onion that's coming up and those should do great through the winter. I have some spinach seedlings up and then I have some dill that I've had here all summer. So I've been using the little flowers on here. I wish I'd planted more dill. Next year I'm going to be very aggressive with my dill planting. So I'll have it um, all season. So I'm going to need to do that. Now behind this pot I have some mint and I showed you that last uh, tour. It um, I cut it all the way back and so now it's just flourishing and looking great. This is lime thyme and I mentioned that I moved one of my thyme containers down to the garden. This is the other container so I'm going to also move this one down. Uh, the thyme, um, it just does so much better in the ground so I'm going to go ahead and move that. And this is just a little container of different things. I have some rosemary in there and I have some spinach growing from seed along with some dill and I think I even put some cilantro in there. So I have a little bit of everything. It's doing pretty good and then behind there I have some cilantro that is just beautiful right now. I've been using a lot of that. Um, it is just wonderful this time of year. It loves these cool season temperatures. And this is my little kefir lime tree. It has some kind of spider mite infestation on it or something that may have been the problem that I've been having with it so I've sprayed it pretty well I mentioned in my um, how to overwinter pepper video that I've been having some kind of it could be scale uh, that's on here but I think it's more some kind of little spider mite because there's little nesting areas let me show you this a little closer okay so you might be able to see on here it's like a little nesting area um, little web so I'm not sure what it is so I'll just need to uh, keep spraying it and we'll try to identify it when things slow down a little bit it's a lot of research to try to find out stuff like that so but overall the tree is looking a little bit better I side dressed it with a lot of Epsom salt to help to see if I could green up those leaves some and I think it's helped they're looking better they're shinier they're not so dull and dried out looking so I think that probably helped it out a little bit and the fruit on the Kalamondan bush here is starting to turn orange for me. Now right next to it I have a nasturtium plant. Let me show you this a little bit closer. So the nasturtiums are blooming, but I have an infestation of aphids on here, and that's very common for nasturtiums. Let me show you these a little bit closer up. So with nasturtiums, you'll usually always find the aphids up underneath the leaves, and they're little black dots. So you'll notice if your plants ever start to slow down and shrivel up, um, it might not be from lack of watering, just look underneath your leaves because that's where you'll probably find uh, your uh, aphids. 
So here's a closer up picture. All the little black dots are aphids. <laughs> and um, some people actually plant nasturtiums to, as a deterrent for aphids to keep the aphids off of their other plants. That's, I mean, that's how much aphids love them. They love their nasturtiums. Nasturtiums are not a winter plant, though. They'll die as soon as a freeze comes over, so I'm not really too concerned about this little plant. So right here in the front, I have some chives, and I'd mentioned in my last video I needed to cut those back, but they're okay right now. I've just pulled off some of the yellowing leaves that were kind of an undergrowth, and I'm just letting those uh, grow, and then I'll probably cut them back as the temperatures get colder. And then I've been using a lot of the Greek oregano. It's always one of my favorite things to use, and it's I have it growing everywhere, I think. <laughs> I put it in every garden that I have. <laughs> and then right back here, is the tarragon. It is so beautiful. It loves these cooler temperatures like this. So let me show you it a little bit closer. So the tarragon is really nice and I cut that all the way back in September, September 3rd. And of course it's been about I guess five weeks now and it's just beautiful. It's probably looks better than it has all year. So it is really nice and next to it I have the sage growing and it's looking pretty good and then what I'm really proud of this year and I've mentioned it several times is the little Meyer lemon tree I counted I guess it was uh, yeah yesterday I counted the lemons on there or the oranges whatever you want to call them they're part orange and part lemon and I counted at least 50 so a lot of uh, lemons I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with those and I think I'll do something very simple for you guys when they ripen up like a lemonade or maybe um, a Meyer lemon pie something like that I think would be wonderful and then right over here I have just started about five containers of different vegetables so no herbs on this side of my garden I'm experimenting with some more broccoli and cabbage but most of all I've planted spinach over here so because I love my spinach and it survives very well through the winter and I always can get an early spring harvest with it. Okay, so there you go. That's my herb container garden for October, early October. And I hope that I may have given you some ideas for things that you can grow during these cool seasons that we have approaching the fall and the winter even. So thanks so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day.